You guys ever seen El Camino Mosquitoes? El Casquito. That sounded better in my head. Hey, um, we're gonna get this El Camino out of here. It, it actually has been raining in Texas, which has been great. So it made a swimming pool in the back of this thing. This is a 1980 Chevrolet El Camino. A lot of people are hypothesizing that this was not actually on the resort when I bought the property, and it was just a way for me to get a new El Camino. It's actually a really good idea but uh, this actually was on the resort property. This thing is like a half race El Camino, half piece of junk, but we wanna get it going again. Probably not good that battery is just sitting in the puddle of water. So we're gonna pull her out, put her on a trailer, take her back to my shop and see what it'll take to get this 1980 Chevy El Camino back on the road again. It actually has really straight body panels. This thing is gonna clean up so good. We just can figure out all the little quirks and features. Okay, so now we'll see how much battery this thing has. And if we're gonna have to push it or not. <laughs> Doesn't do anything. <laughs> Mikey goes, let me put the parking brake down. Just goes all the way to the floor, does nothing. Dude, this thing is nice. What I like is having these huge, I think, Camaro wheels, but like made to look like Camaro wheels. So you can see the drum brakes in the back. Really a nice feature. You know what you want to see is a huge drum. Also, another good feature is that shock right there. It's got shock absorbers with extra springs, probably for a little lift but you just got them dangling. It just dangles in the back, on one side at least. So yeah, this thing, it's gonna need a few things. But, I'll take it back, figure out what it needs, and put it back together again. You've all heard the adage, there's more than one way to skin a cat. As a veterinarian, I can verify that is true. Editor, make sure to cut that part out. I don't want people knowing about that. Yeah, what does uh, that even mean? Uh, but anyway, let me give you some, uh, some dad advice. I actually just saw this on Instagram the other day, it's pretty cool the way this guy ties up his extra. So he rolls it up like this. At the end, you have about yeah, a yard's worth. You wrap around, you come back here, and you bring it through the hole like this, and then you spin it and wrap it up like this until it gets all tight. And it just looks cool. Actually kind of got a little off there, but that's what it's supposed to look like. Get as tight as you can. And it seems like it's gonna come out. We haven't had one come out yet. I'm just gonna keep doing it until I see if one falls out, but that's on there. And then to undo it, you just unroll it the other way. But 
So far the wind hasn't pulled any of these out yet and that's how I've been doing it for a couple months now. Matt's got his real cool fancy way he learned and how he's been doing it. Let me show you an old trick. Ain't going nowhere. Took less time too. <laughs> Windshield, oldest trick in the book. Oldest trick. We have El Mosquito loaded up. Uh, actually, the tires are bad. They're all dry rotted, but like, I think three out of four of them still have air. So this thing has not been left for 20 years. Uh, it's a more recent um, acquisition to the resort, I guess. There's no sticker to see when it was street legal last, but it also, the way the engine is, I don't know if it was street legal. It might've just been a race car. There's been tenants who have lived out here for a long time. So I don't know if they this was a race car build that they abandoned or if this was actually street legal at one time. It has an Arkansas sticker on it. Oh, Arkansas. Arkansas State Police Association supporter. Also says, stay alive, don't drink and drive. I wonder if the owner's still alive. Oh, I'm the owner now, mine. <laughs> okay, to the HQ. Hi, Matt. You think he's gonna come back and get us? Chances are maybe. Um, oh, look. Oh, nice. John sprung a leak. That's your problem right there. Hey, Matt. No. You got a blinker fluid leak. Oh, no. We'll get the blinker fluid tank fixed ladies and gentlemen, is how you run two of your own cars into each other. Are you ready? Ready! Coming in! Okay. <laughs> Do the brakes work? I mean, I'm on them. <laughs> what happens when you let off? Nice! This is great! <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Mikey. Sorry guys, wish I could help. That is not it. <laughs> There's something wrong There's something with this. Wrong. <laughs> this transmission's messed up. Right? Hey, we drained the pool. El Mosquito. I was just looking at these wheels because they're kind of ridiculously big. In the front, it has 20s. In the back, it's got 22s. We got our first car in the HQ riding on 22s. Bad news on the El Mosquito. I just spent some time jacking with this thing. That engine's locked up. Um, I put a socket and a big ratchet on the crank bolt right down there, and I cannot get this engine to turn over. I was really hoping this was gonna be like a clean out the carburetors, hook a starter up, battery, and fire up. Yeah, not so lucky. So I don't know anything about this motor. I can tell it's a small block Chevy. I don't know anything more than that. It looks with all of this race gear that it probably either had some horsepower at one time or they were building it to have horsepower, but it is locked up. Now, locked up can mean a lot of things. It can mean uh, through a rod and it's got just a you know, a rod sticking sideways in it, or it's got an exploded piston or something bad. Or it can just mean it's been sitting for like seven years and it just needs to be broken loose. I'm not sure which, but for those who didn't see the first video when we found this thing, I'll kind of give you a once over. Uh, small block Chevy, we got headers down here, a lot of chromes, got a whole chrome accessory kit up front, power steering, power brakes, um, it has two carburetors, as you can see, two four barrel carburetors. It's got a high intake right there, as you can see. And then a uh, big aftermarket radiator up front, big aftermarket distributor in the back. It's got a big coil. So this thing I think either was or they were trying to make it a pretty hot motor, pretty spicy. So was it too spicy? and they popped it, and it's all trash now, and that's why it got parked. I don't know. 
there's also a lot of weird things with this car like no inner fenders and also nothing holding the front clip on it just shimmies this should be bolted to that frame right there it's very not bolted to the frame here's what your car should not do whole front clip shimming not hooked to the frame the bumper is hooked to the frame you can see the bumper doesn't move just the front grille fenders so they didn't drive it like this hopefully so since this motor is locked up so hard i i'm really uncomfortable with trying to diagnose and ideally fix it by myself so i'm gonna i'm gonna have to find some help i need someone to come in and help me do this and i need to find someone with like like a real strong grip to really crank that thing and try to see if we can break it loose like someone has grip like like a vice like a vice grip whoa hey hey vice grip garage is here heard you needed some help i'm actually really pumped that you're here it's been a long time coming yeah uh finally got you to come out to the ranch and what do you think about my 1980 el you know, camino this thing is i don't really see what's wrong with it i mean it's, it's pretty good it's pretty good actually <laughs> i mean there's a crack in the windshield somewhere yeah kind of like a body-sized hole actually and i like how the seat is also oh it's locked i wonder <laughs> the question is is the seat un unbolted unscrewed or oh yeah you just can you reach in there oh. or or is the seat broken is that ostrich oh yeah it's it's fake ostrich for sure there you go so did it break these bolts? No. Oh. Someone just unbolted it, I think. Ooh, lightning wear cap. Yeah, you never it's never a good sign when there's extra distributors in the car. High rise intake, dual fuel make it happeners, it's got music pipes on it, music pipes. heads. You got everything here. I don't know what he just said. But it's locked up. Right? It doesn't turn. I mean, throw a throw a wrench on there and see if you agree, but okay. it seems pretty locked up. You think there's some things we can try. I actually, I did take the spark plugs off and I dumped some, some brake free kind of stuff in there to see if it'd sit, and, okay. but I don't know. Yeah, I think we spend maybe like an hour tops on it, see if we can crack this thing loose. And then if not, you've got backup plans. I, I did, yeah, I have, a, I have a backup plan. This would be cooler though, cause it you looks like it's got some raced out stuff. Well, there's, well you found this in the trees, right? Yep. So. Someone was hiding it because it was still kind of goodlier, or <laughs> someone blew it up or and just put it in the trees. Yeah, I have a feeling it was that. You haven't seen this either. Oh. Okay. She, she got that shimmy shake. Jiggles like Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> you clearly got more issues than National Geographic here, but I think we'll, we'll sort it through. Perfect. Well, I'm glad you're here. Hood off, valve covers off. We got roller rockers up in here. Now Derek got the fan off so he can get this big torque bar on here and see if the motor turns any. Which, I mean, I'm, I'm way stronger than him, so I already did it. No, it won't turn. I have Sasquatch power, though. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Ready? Yep. Nope. Yeah, that's pretty tight. <laughs> so motors are not supposed to be that hard to turn, huh? Something's wrong. Little friction in there. Yes. Yeah, that's going to snap the... Crank bolt, so I'm gonna slide underneath and use a flywheel wrench. Yeah, which I just learned about today. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. I'll grab them. So we have a flywheel wrench, so you can hook onto that flywheel, get, would you say, three times the force? Yeah, it's a torque multiplier. I'm not good at the math magicianals, but it's more good than, than that. Perfect. And then, so you're turning from the other side of that crank, and ideally won't just shear that bolt off right. in the block. So instead of turning a bolt this big, you're turning a flywheel that big so you get more so we'll know if she's locked up yep so is, light and just is this to break it loose if it will break loose or is it just to verify that yeah it's it's pretty messed up or yeah, both if, if this doesn't move it then it's well we've got to scope you got to pull that thing and, yeah it's pretty messed up at that point. sweet <sighs> that sounded good is that the engine turning over man i think that was my c7 breaking <laughs> <laughs> uh, turns out engine might be a little locked up. This usually works 20% of the time, but this is... Jeez. All right, so we're pulling a motor today, aren't we? Woo! Sweet. That's a big bummer. I was really hoping. Hey, there is a transmission in here, though. Well, that's good. Yeah. Look on the bright side. So Derek has, I don't know if this is going to show up, but that's inside one of our pistons, little camera, and there's not supposed to be so many 
uh, chunks of metal. And ew. <laughs> what the heck, man? Severely rusted. So just was full of water for a long time? And full of water, sat full of water for years, and the cylinder walls are just, they're rotten. It, and that's the like second this. one you scoped, the other one was worse than that? Yeah, uh, number six is even worse. Uh, so even if we get this broke free and it, we get it fired up somehow, the rings are just going to get chewed to pieces and throw metal through everything. And So we need to yank this motor. If only we had another motor somewhere. Oh, I got, I had one actually brought here as a spare. Oh, nice. And this one turns. <laughs> I had a feeling that was gonna be bad, so we went ahead and brought this just for today, just in case. This is a uh, small block out of a 70s pickup. It's going in, a 1980 pickup. Very exciting. Dang it, Dad, what happened? Oh, man. What'd you do? You said there was no water in this thing. When Derek and I were here, it was all clean, and then Dad showed up and made a mess. Somewhere there's a leak. That's oh, your, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Dad, you're leaking coolant a little bit from yeah, there to yeah, there. <laughs> We're stripping everything down uh, so we can pull this block out. I'm under this car right now. Just got the drive shaft out, taking some bolts out of the transmission pan, and Derek and I have just been calling this thing. Uh, he made up the name, but we call it the Crack Camino. So I think that's what we're going with. This, this is now known as the Crack Camino. And we're gonna bring it back to life with less crack than before. Oh boy, I hear a lot of, a lot of pouring. Just pretend you're not here. Right? Yeah, I wish I would've just left it closed now. You wanna let go of that? What are those lines coming out of the side of the transmission over there? The cooler. <laughs> Where did that go? It kind of like sucked it up in the car. Yeah, there's a lot of fluid under that car that wasn't there before. Great. I think you're Cherry picker might be low on juice. Yeah, it's not moving very much. Just went to the floor over here, baby. <laughs> yes. Yep, and hard. A little bit higher now. Is that cool? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Coming down. Good job. Nailed it. Easy as that. So he thinks water just got in and locked up, rusted these things shut. So we're about to pull a head off and see what it looks like. But yeah, you can see how rusty it is in that hole. Those ports right there, it's definitely been some water in them. <laughs> Jeez. Well, you're telling me that's not supposed to be there? I mean, some Whoa. Windex might clean this up, but. What is that? Some glue and holding that one shut. Uh, bummer, oh. dude. Yeah, that was not gonna come free with the flywheel wrench. No, <laughs> it's just <laughs> gross. Just solid rust. This thing is bored 60 over. Also, we've been doing a lot of cave stuff on the channel lately. <laughs> um, so you'll appreciate this, you cave guys. She's got stalactites hanging up here. Just slowly trying to make their way down. It's pretty bad. I mean, it's just rust that has been sitting in there for years. You think this motor's done, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's already 60 over. Block's pretty much toast. We can't hone that here nah. or do anything here, but we could potentially take these heads. That'd be cool. And put them on. Make them work. Rig and do some stuff. The heads are good. Yeah, Aluminum. The heads are great. Yeah, they're not rusty. We've got good rockers. We've got push hard and push rods. What a deal. We've got a nice intake and that thing. What a deal. This is the other motor. We are going to use it instead because that motor's shot. We're going to take the heads that are on the crack Caminos engine, those blueprint aluminum heads, clean them up. Derek's over here outside cleaning those things up. We're going to put them on this thing. We just wanted to wash it all down, get it all degreased out here before we start messing with it. She is sprayed down. We're actually going to paint this thing. Derek and I are going to go shopping right now. So just, you know, a couple YouTubers out on the town looking for engine parts. He's shopping. I'm supervising. We make a great team. <laughs> things are going well. This is all we need. He said he's buying, so I'm kind of just... Yeah, perfect. <laughs> it's not stopping. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Shoot, man, I don't know about this. Grand total. Whew. We are pulling all the trim and all the marker lights off. We took the trim off these fenders. Derek says it shouldn't go back on. I kind of don't like it. I mean, you see this thing has no trim on it, but like I thought it kind of looked good in a funny way on this, but I think we're just gonna leave it off because Derek wants to paint this car. He wants to do a little custom 
vice grip paint job on it, which is not a bad idea because the paint's ugly. It's it's real dull and flat. And I was just thinking about polishing it up a little bit, but probably not going to polish up nice. But what is good is the body is all straight. There's no rust. Uh, there's no dents. This guy is a super straight bodied car. It's just got dull paint on it. So I think once we, you know, chip all this kind of stuff off, we'll give her a light sanding. It's not going to be a great paint job, but it's going to be a paint job. And we'll really make this thing shine and be beautiful. What do you got going out here? Diana. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Good, We're gonna paint right. this engine too. We have these heads on it just so that we don't have to worry about taping off stuff. We're not gonna use those heads though. We're gonna put the aluminum heads on here. Yes sir. And uh, paint her black. That's gonna be so good looking. Get out of here, cat. All right, this is the best El Camino ever. This is the worst paint part on it. There's just a little surface rust under there. No rust through. The bed, the paint's chipping bad, but there's no rust in the corners at all. El Cromino up there, man. There were some holes in it. This thing is freaking good. So this thing, back when it was running, with that big engine, all that horsepower, you got a bed in the back. Man, some babies were made in this car, I guarantee it. And they will be again. Not by me, though. It's probably, probably Vice Grip. You gonna make any babies in this car? Okay. <laughs> All right, I went and picked up flex plate, torque converter, starter from my dad's house. While Derek was here painting this beauty, man, she looking good. We got new head gaskets on there. The heads, you think they're gonna work? Yeah, look at them. Stand up nice. God. So these are the actual heads that were on this engine. So we got the aluminum heads going back on a different short block here. Going on now, look at this. This is gonna look good. Brand new paint job, so that means everything inside the engine is basically brand new too. Craigslist rebuild. Yep. Oh, and it fits. Look at that. All right, everything's going together. Heads on. We got the old intake on because it mounts to this. We're gonna put the, the high rise on it. We got transmission that was in El Cromino originally on. This transmission has driven a car around this property before, <laughs> another El Camino. And we're gonna throw it in there and see if we can get her bolted in today, and then we are done for the day. Also, I put some rollers on there just so we can move her around eventually. Those wheels came off the El Camino as well, which is why they're sort of painted chrome, because I spray painted the entire car, including the tires, chrome. And those wheels actually came off, I had a car in high school, it was a 72 Formula 400 Firebird, and it came with those wheels on it. I took them off and put other wheels on because those were 14s and they look kind of too small, but those wheels have, I've had those things for a really long time. Still using them today. Whoa, watch it, dude, you're gonna scratch her. <laughs> We have an engine. Oh, dude, motor mounts are even lining up. <laughs> we have an engine sitting in a Camino. All right, we'll be back tomorrow to start putting this thing together and hopefully start it up manana. Yes. Is that gonna work? I think so. Giddy up. Here's our update. We got engine in, transmissions in. We have our drive shaft hooked up. We got our intake on. We got carbs on. We even had cute little air filters on there. Uh, problem is, I don't know if that one's gonna work. Even though we got a big old cow, we might have to cut it a little bit, huh? Yeah, I might have to get the saws all out. Make, <laughs> <some old laughs> make a big old <laughs> hole there. Problem, uh, the wiring was real bad. Big surprise, everything is real bad in this thing. So, we're working on wiring. Um, we have fuel hooked up. We have not looked in the fuel tank, though. We probably should. You know what the solution to pollution is? Dilution, so we just dump good gas in the bad gas, right? Yep. Okay, so we'll we'll dilute the bad gas. It'll be fine, and we're hoping to start this thing up uh, shortly. We just need a few more key components, like belts and things. Everything's wrong with this freaking orange El Camino, uh, including the shifter. So, um, because we're running out of time, I'm going to steal the shifter out of El Cromino. Sorry, bud. I'll put it back, I promise. So I unhooked it up top. I'm gonna crawl in here and unhook it below. We'll give it back. Also, a seldomly seen part of El Cromino is that gas pedal. It's freaking awesome. This car's so good. And and we'll be we'll put a better shifter in you later once we order it, I promise. This shifter isn't even chrome, man. Like you you deserve better than this. So normally there's a cotter pin holding 
a shift cable in here, but no, no, Chromino. El Chromino has a nail, straight up nail. I mean, it never failed, so I guess it got the job done. We got the shifter in. It works, it shifts. It's hooked up all the way down to the transmission. We got everything really close up here. Belt's on, Dad's locking down some things. We, our belt for the power steering pump was the wrong size. Where we're going, we don't need power steering. We got dual carbs up top, and uh, yeah, Vice Grip just primed them, so we're really close. We got a batteria. What else? About ready to hit the key, man. We just need gas. If this thing starts up, uh, it's customary in my state to do a celebratory white claw cracking. <laughs> this guy's never drank a white claw before. <laughs> And it would actually, um, it would offend us greatly if you didn't crack a White Claw. I'll have a few sips of a Barefoot. Yeah. There we go. What do you call the uh, transmission in your language? Go forward, go back machine. This we're, is blood juice. We're filling up the go forward, go back machine right now with blood juice. Really slowly too. It's like just trickling down there. Yeah, I don't know what's, is this open? That muzzle of a valve. Oh, there we go. Look at that. But we'll pretend we didn't see it. There is literally blood dripping on the ground. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Oh, right out of there. Maybe oh. if I over torque that one. Just like that wrench, would you? See, this one doesn't. That one won't bite because the yeah. case is busted. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a total gap there. Great. Dang it. So that's broken right there, which I saw, but I thought it'd be fine. Do you have it's a C-clamp vice grip? Yeah, C-clamp, genius. Okay, so all we needed was the C-clamp, and now we're back in business. Ready? get to chug a White Claw with Vice Grip Garage. What's the point of living? Checking to see if we have spark right now. This should blink. Yep. Spark, fuel, timing. That's what we need. Wow. Oh, we didn't put we didn't put the pistons in the cylinders. Oh, shucks! I always forget that. Okay, here we go. That's straight liquid nitrous. <laughs> Not a little bit of fuel. We gotta see why it's not firing the right direction. It's like when you have a firearm and you fire it and it goes backwards. Not ideal. So, <laughs> distributor cap is on 180 degrees backwards. So, we think we flip it around. Should have better luck. This one's gonna do it. You gotta yell, bring the thunder. Okay. For me. Ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yep. Bring the thunder! <laughs> It runs. The part I like the most is the engine moving. <laughs> yeah. All right, where's this uh, bird foot at? Let's All right, let's go. <laughs> Raspberry, black cherry, natural lime, or ruby grapefruit. You seem like a, a raspberry guy to me. Cheers. Cheers. Good job. Yeah, me too. All right, don't tell anybody they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> we found out where the, uh, the exhaust leak was from. It was from cylinder number one. Uh, because there wasn't a spark plug in it. There's a big <laughs> hole in it. That was, that was running on uh, seven cylinders and one was wide open. Should we try it again? Let's try it again. Yeah. It's probably a run better. 
That's way better. Wow. Your kids, if you want your engine to be louder, just take a couple spark plugs out. It's super loud. Script. I'm gonna put <laughs> dual carbs on my F-350. This thing sounds good, we're running it now. Just to get it up to temperature, make sure that everything looks like it's working, not leaking, that kind of thing. It honestly runs really good. I was kind of nervous putting dual carbs on there. We haven't even adjusted them. We just kind of put them where we thought they should be, started it up. This is gonna be a badass car. I wanna be pumped about this. All right, we're actually gonna, fairly soon, we are trying to get the rear brakes done. Um, we're going to put it on the ground, on the wheels, and then see if the transmission shifts and we can roll it forward and backwards. And then we're gonna try to paint it today too. I think it's gonna go from just a old barn fine El Camino to something really special very quickly. Dude, she's peppy. We got three lug nuts up front, that should be good. Um, we got four in the back, so better than good. Definitely got burnout tires in the back. That doesn't mean anything. The tires are hitting the fender. Like in a good way or a bad way? I mean, a Sawzall will fix it. Oh, oh, that's why those were so bent up. Here. You're right, yeah, that's why. Yeah, they were bent like that. Fixed. Yep, <laughs> factory fresh. We have no brake. Is the brake pedal supposed to go to the floor? Not typically. Okay, yeah, let's just let's just neutral try, check the brakes first. That was just a little carburetor hiccup. You got a diesel now? That's a carburetor thing, you know? Wheel straight. Uh, oh, yep. Pedal. All right, hold on, let me check brakes. Oh, yeah. stops like a dream. Wow. Okay, let's take her for a first drive. Who's going with me? You can sit right here. You're nope. Your own. Nobody? I'm having another third foot watching you go <laughs> Oh, oh. So uh, your front wheels got in some ATF and just <laughs> slid. New neutral is hard to get to. <laughs> yeah, we need to work on the shifter. Dad was like, turn off. I was like, oh yeah, I can just turn it off. But I was like trying to get it neutral while my foot is on the floor. Oh. Hey, that could have gone worse, you know? It, it's pretty good. Oh yeah, over here That's you're in the kitty litter. So yeah. you're just... <laughs> Just dragging. <laughs> this madman wants to freaking paint this car now. Yeah. I always leave good enough alone. But, I mean, yeah, it'd look great. It's not like we haven't done enough work yet. It's true. We gotta add some more. So we're gonna scrub her down. She's sanded down already. We just gotta scrub it, get all, all the oil off. Have you revealed the color yet? Uh, I don't actually know. It's been several days. Go ahead. Tell them what we're gonna do. I won't really say the scheme yet. But you know it's got to be red, white, and blue. America, USA, USA. I uh, just noticed you're you're drinking a White Claw willingly over here. So that could be anybody's. Yeah. Someone said it down. <laughs> well, hey, uh, I think you did a great job on this car, and I just want to say thanks. Absolutely, man. Freaking awesome. Blast to be here. Well, good. I feel I feel bad. He's like, it's a blast to be here. He's been working so hard. This dude's a good dude. So go check out Vice Grip Garage. Uh, let's get him to two million ASAP. Man, what are you at, one point what? One, six fifty, something like Yeah, that. so if you wanna see, he actually does this kind of stuff where he takes old neglected cars and puts them back together and actually usually drives them home. I told him he couldn't take this one, this one's for me. But go check him out, Vice Grip Garage, linked in description. Let's just warp to the good part. Three, two, one. Holy cow! 
Look at this beauty. Jeez. God bless America. Derek killed it. Uh, it's actually the next day. He flew home and we just uh, are starting to unwrap everything. Peeling all the tape off, all the plastic off this thing. Just admiring this beauty. So we still need to come back. We're going to wet sand it um, to do the final coat. But he put uh, two coats of clear coat on top of everything too. Um, I was actually here when he left. He left here at like one something and it was like 1.30 in the morning. So Derek, Vice Group Garage, you're awesome. He's already on his way back home now. But the dude worked super hard and uh, got this thing painted, got this thing running, got it all going again. We love this car but we need to give this to one of you. So we're gonna actually do a giveaway over the next two weeks um, to get you this car. Uh, we're not done working on it, I promise. There's some, some things it needs. Uh, we're gonna fix it all up, get it totally roadworthy and street legal for one of you to win. So the way to win this thing is we're gonna have a link active sale. So we have a new shipment of stuff coming in. We need to make room for it. So everything on the site is heavily discounted. And for every item you purchase, you will get an entry into winning this car. We're gonna run it for two weeks. This thing has a fresh drive line and we're gonna get everything totally fixed on it over the next two weeks. Get all the trim put back on put our wheels back on, we have brand new tires. We're gonna get all the gauges working because currently none of them work. We're gonna get the passenger seat put back in here. I have stars that Clint printed at the bunker. We're gonna put stars all over this so we will have stars and stripes, crack Camino from the ranch, rebuilt 25% by me and 75% by Vice Grip Garage and this little baby could be yours. Okay, still a lot of stuff we need to tidy up. A Lot of stuff we're gonna do this car over the next two weeks, but hey, could be yours. Giveaway starting today, link in description to Link Active. Anything you purchase for you, your significant other, get you some women's workout clothes, some dude workout clothes, get buffer, get you no Camino. We're gonna sweeten this deal too. Uh, over the next couple episodes, you'll see. This thing's gonna get nicer. God, I freaking love it. Anyway, hey, go check out Vice Group Garage. He's so cool, and he spent so much time. He worked so freaking hard on this car. So, Derek, huge thank you from me. Thanks for making this piece of junk we found on the resort turn into a freaking patriotic America mobile. Thanks for watching this episode. I love you. We'll see you next time.